the human colon, there's a lot of bacteria, even for gram, that says, I know it's small letters, it says 10 to the 11th power of live microorganisms per gram of colon. That's a one followed by 11 zeros, okay? There's a lot of different species, but two of them are the predominant species in our gut, Bacteroides and Firmicutes. That's over 90% of all the species. These are the good bacteria. These are the bacteria that we want there that help keep us healthy and prevent disease. It's kind of a pretty fancy graph here. The one thing I didn't do is figure out where the laser pointer is. There we go. So there's a, a line that goes up in the middle, up and down this graph. That's a neutral line. And what this graph is showing is the different proportions of bacteria in our colon. Now, on the left of the line, these are the bad bacteria, okay? So Clostridia, we don't want to have that in our colon if we can help it. To the right of the line, we have lactobacilli. Lactobacilli are the good bacteria. That's what we find in a lot of probiotics. And then things in the middle here are the neutral bacteria. So the Bacteroides, the Firmicutes, these are the ones that are the staple in our gut, the most common bacteria. So our microbiome is unique. Everybody in this room, I want you to just take a look at your neighbor. You and your neighbor, your DNA, you share 99% of it, you're so alike. 99.9% .9 of your DNA is common, it's all the same. What about your microbiome? You only share 10%. So we're all different. And this, in a large part, dictates who we are, how we act. Another fancy graph we're going to go to, but as I was saying, the percentage of different bacteria in your gut, your gut population, is what's going to determine your overall health. So your human gut composition is here. There are many things that can influence your human gut composition. Your geographic provenance, so where you live, which continent on the world do you live on, is going to influence what type of gut populations you have. Your dietary habits, so we know that vegetarians have increased bacteroides, which is the good bacteria. They have different gut populations than people that are meat eaters. Probiotics, if we take a probiotic supplement or we get probiotics in our food, we're going to have increase in lactobacillus. And the lactobacillus, again, is that good bacteria. Antibiotics, I gotta touch on antibiotics. As a surgeon, there are life-threatening infections I have to give antibiotics for. They have a place, there's no doubt about it. Thousands of lives have been saved with antibiotics. But if you don't need them, minor ear infections, sinus infections, cold flu symptoms, don't take antibiotics. One course of broad-spectrum antibiotic that you would get for a sinusitis will wipe out over a third of your gut bacteria. It's a big deal. So if you can avoid it, don't take antibiotics. There's a place for them for sure. If you need them, please take them, but otherwise, avoid them. Malnutrition. So malnourished children who don't get the phytonutrients and the vitamins that you need actually have different microbiomes, different decreased healthy bacteria. And then age, and we're gonna talk about this more in detail. But throughout our life, our microbiome changes. We start out when we're born pretty much with very little bacteria, and as we go through our lives, we develop our microbiome, and that's determined mostly from influences from our mother, from our close contacts, our family, and where we grew up. And then when we're an adult, our microbiome stays relatively stable. If we don't have any changes in our life, any major insults like antibiotics, our microbiome is stable. Then as we age, as we become more elderly, we lose a lot of that diversity, and diversity is a good thing in your microbiome. When you lose that diversity, you become more susceptible to chronic illness. In utero, when we are in our mother's womb, it's largely a sterile place. We used to think it was completely sterile, that there were no bacteria at all, but we're finding out that there's more and more little tiny traces of bacteria that live in the amniotic fluid that are in the uterine cord blood. So we do get a little bit of colonization as a fetus. Once we're born, everything changes. The mode of delivery matters. We know that babies who are born via C-section have a very different microbiome compared to babies that are born vaginally. There's a fix to this because sometimes you do need C-sections. There's a role for them. If you have to have a baby via a C-section, they've shown 
You can take a gauze, rub it on the, mo the mother's birth canal, and you rub it on your baby, you will actually transfer some of that microbiome. But when you have nothing, when you come out completely sterile, the gut is a place where any bacteria that it first encounters will take up home there and deliver, they will develop into your microbiome. So you want to make sure it's the good bacteria that fill up those spaces, not the dangerous ones.